And this is day one, and we're gonna get started with some of the basics of Excel. So, why does Excel even matter? Why do we care about it? And why do so many companies rely on Excel? And why are they looking for people who are great at using it? It's actually simple. It's because of clean data. When you have clean data, you can make smarter decisions. And when your data is clean, you can do three things. So the first thing is, you can understand what's happening in your business. So you begin to spot patterns, like when your busy seasons are, or how different teams impact each other. You could even see which customers need more attention or where profits are being driven or which products are driving the profits. So the second thing you will notice is clean data helps you spot problems. Data helps you catch issues early before they become bigger ones. So maybe inventory is running low or costs are quietly rising in one department. With clean data, you can catch it early and fix it before it becomes a bigger problem that's harder to fix. And you can also predict the future. So the more clean data you have, the more accurate guesses you can make about the future. You can even figure out what customers would need before they even ask. Or you can schedule an equipment to be fixed before it even breaks. So basically you can plan ahead with confidence. Once you have these insights, it becomes easier to guide your team and spot different opportunities and then just make smarter decisions together. But here's the catch. Real data is messy. It's structured in a way that's hard for many of us to work with. So you're going to catch things like errors or gaps or inconsistent formats between different columns. And that's why Excel is great because it allows you to convert raw data into usable data. So it helps us turn this unstructured data into a format that's easy for ourselves and our stakeholders to analyze. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you I'll show you an example that you can relate to. So let's say I, I own a supermarket and I sell fresh fruits, hot meals, and snacks. I record all my sales into this notebook. So as you can see, I've got the month, I've got my sales and the expenses. And after every single month, I calculate the profits. So at first, this method is easy and it's fine to use. I don't have any real problems calculating everything through a notebook or a notepad. However, as the business scales over time, I'm going to run into a few problems. So first of all, I may actually end up miscalculating some of the profits because I have to go line by line and make sure each calculation is correct. It's going to make it harder for me to manage all of these finances. And I could make a decision based on the wrong figures. So already, this is a problem. With Excel, I can actually do everything within a single table. So as you can see, I've still got the exact same finances here, but everything is maintained inside a simple table. So I've got my sales, I've got my expenses, and if I want to calculate my profit now, so all I need to do is just add a new column and then just deduct the expenses from the sales. And there we have it. And if I want to drag it down, all I need to do is just drag the fill handle to so that little rectangle over there. And it's calculated all the profit for me. So if I have more months that I need to add to the bottom of this, I can easily just do that. And this will simply calculate my profits on my behalf. So I no longer need to go into each of these and manually calculate the profits anymore because Excel does it for me. And I've only done it once and I've just dragged down the formula. So that's one of the reasons why it's, it's very popular for companies to use Excel because analyzing the data and creating these calculations, it's easy. And that's all done through a couple of clicks. So if I actually want to filter the data to a specific month, it's very simple. I just have a few clicks. Let's say I want to analyze March financials and I've got it right there. So it's eliminated all the other months and it's filtered just to March. And if I want to include more months, let's say I want to include January and just compare the two, I can do just that. That's just done with a few clicks. Let me actually break down what Excel is made of. I'm going to walk you through the interface itself and just run you through some of the basics. If you notice here on the left, you're going to see all these numbers. These are rows. So a row in Excel is represented by a number. So each of these numbers on the left. So if I want to click on row two, I just click on the number two. If I want to click on row five, I just click on that. If I want to, if I want to go all the way down to, let's say, 
row 50. I just click that. Now the maximum amount of rows you can have in an Excel sheet is just over a million. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you're gonna notice this is just over a million. You can't go beyond that. And if you notice right at the top, you're gonna to see letters. Each of these letters is a column. So here's column A, here's column D. And if I wanna to go to column H, I just click on H. And if I wanna go all the way to the right, you're going to notice it stops right here. So the maximum amount of columns you can have in an Excel sheet is 16,000. You can't go beyond that. A cell is just where a column and a row meet. So if I click on this cell here, this is D9 because the column letter is D and the row number is 9. So if I was to click on this one here, this is B3 because the column is B and the row number is three. This entire document is called a workbook. So a workbook is made up of worksheets and a worksheet is just a tab inside your notebook. So if you notice here, this worksheet is called sheet one. If I wanna create another worksheet, I just click the plus sign here and then it's now called sheet two. So I can actually name it anything I want. So all I do is just double click on sheet two and then give it any name I want. So let's call it test worksheet. Or I can even call it, this is a temporary name for worksheet. So you can name it anything you want, basically. So I'm just gonna um, take it back. I'll, I'll name it um, test worksheet for now. So if you wanna navigate between the worksheets, you can just simply click between them. You can also use control and page up and down to navigate between the worksheets. So if you wanna to go to the next sheet, if I wanna to go to test worksheet from where I am right now, I just hit control and page down and I go to the next one. Inside each worksheet, you can enter your data, you can do calculations with it, like I showed you just earlier, and you can even build visuals. So the choice is up to you. Each workbook contains multiple sheets and each worksheet contains multiple cells. If you see this at the top, you're going to notice that this is the ribbon. The ribbon contains all the tools that we need to format our data, to create visuals and formulas, and to do some interesting things that help us analyze our data. I would actually recommend you spending a few moments. If you haven't used Excel before, I recommend you spending a few moments just playing around with some of the features available in the ribbon. But some of the key tabs that I recommend you look into is the Home tab. So the Home tab will contain all your main formatting operations. The insert tab allows you to insert things like shapes, visuals, or pivot tables. You can see slices as well. You can add a text box, um, word art, and even equations and symbols. The other one, you know, there's page format, of course. So you can edit your page however you like. You can create a nice setup, a nice format or structure for each page in your workbook. And the formulas tab, so this is where you can handle all sorts of interesting formulas. For those of you that may have some complex financial or mathematical um, use cases, you can play around with the formulas tab. And of course, you've got the data tab, you know, for, you know, cleaning data or for transforming data. All your needs have been met here. So the, the sort and filter operations are there. If you want to convert text to columns, you have that. If you want to remove duplicates, that's available. If you want to group your data, create aggregates, all that's available there. And even pulling data from different data sources, all that's available under the data tab. So you have interesting things like pulling from an Excel file or Excel workbook. You can pull from a text or CSV file, JSON files, PDFs, and you can even pull from databases. So from SQL Server databases. And in future videos, we'll, I will be going through these type of use cases. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comment section. So at the top left, you're gonna see the name box. So this is actually the name of your of the of the cell you're in, or the table you've selected, or even the column that you've named. So for example, if I select this cell here, we know this is D6 without looking at the name box. But if you want to look at the name box, you'll notice that it's got D6 there. If I select this entire column, if you notice, it's actually selected C1 because C1 is the first cell within the C column. But if I was to go and say expenses, 
I can actually name this expenses field, let's say. So now, every time I select this, it's actually going to return expenses field. It's no longer going to return C1 because I've now named it the expense field. And if I actually select this entire data set, I can give it a name. So I can call it um, supermarket finances. So every single time I select this, you're going to notice it changes to that, to supermarket finances. And we have the formula bar. So if I select this cell, it's going to show the content inside it. So I'm going to select A1. The name box will show the name of the cell, but the formula bar will show the content within the cell. So in this case, I've got month. If I select this one here, it's now going to show 6,000. So remember, the name box will show the name of the cell and the formula bar will show the content inside the cell. And if I select, let's say, let's say, let's select this. So name box says this is cell C5, but the formula bar says the content is 3,400 or 3,400. Now, if I select this one here, you'll notice the name of the cell is D2, but the content inside D2 is actually 2000, but it's showing this. And this is actually the formula that we created or the calculation we created. So this is sales minus expenses, which is also showing as cell B2 minus C2. Just keep that in mind. If you're inside a formula, it's actually going to show you the formula because Excel actually looks at the formula as opposed to just the data inside the cell. So if I was to go into, let's say, E2 and do equals 2000, we can see that the content inside the cell is 2000, but Excel reads it as equals D2. In cases where the data is seen, it will show the data, but in cases where the formula exists or the formula is available inside a cell, it's only going to show the formula itself that's being used. So that's a wrap for day one. Remember, I'm not trying to overwhelm you with too much information today. Today is just about getting to know the basics of why we use Excel and what the Excel interface looks like. In the coming days, we're going to go deeper into it, but we want to progress slowly and we don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much information too soon. So if you feel like um, you can progress much more faster, feel free to skip to um, the more advanced lessons. But for those of you that are just beginning or you're just trying to refresh yourself with some of the basics, then feel free to take your time with each lesson. And I hope you learn a lot and I hope you stay blessed.